think becoming an upland farmer in this area is becoming more and more difficult. We've got, only got small flocks of sheep on the moor. I mean, I'm, our flock, 150 sheep is, is, is one of the sort of mid, middle-sized flocks. The, the, the shepherds are getting older on the moor. There's not many young shepherds. I didn't always want to be a sheep farmer. I, I didn't want to be a farmer at all. I really resisted it, in fact, and knew very little about farming and sheep till um, uh, randomly I spent a year in a Buddhist monastery wondering, what am I going to do? And I realised that I'm definitely not going to be a monk. That's, that's a nightmare. It's really hard. You have to do what you're told. I'm going to be a, a farmer because that would be a useful thing to do. And um, there's less young farmers than there were. And I'm really lucky. I've grown up on a farm. I could have this chance. I think there's been black faced sheep on this heather moorland for a long time, hundreds of years. I think the sheep industry has changed hugely. In the 50s, even up into the 50s, wool was a really important part of this trade. And um, the way the sheep looks has changed in 50 years. It used to be much woollier because that was half your income nearly. This is a just a ridiculous problem for us. It costs us about a, a pound 20 a sheep to clip each sheep and yet the wool of each sheep is, isn't worth that much. So it, it, we lose money every year if we pay for a shearer to come. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get paid about 368 quid for a you know, huge amount of wool. And it seems like this is a really important product from sheep that's just being undervalued massively. We use this word hefted, which means that this flock of sheep is attached to this area of moorland. It's a piece of common ground with no fences, no, um, but the sheep uh, belong to one area. And it, um, it's, if, we, if we were to sell this flock and buy a new one, they wouldn't know what to do. The sheep wouldn't know what to do. So it's really valuable to keep this lineage of sheep going and to keep breeding from these sheep so the it, they pass down the knowledge to the next generation of lambs. There's still quite a sort of thriving community of Swaledale sheep farmers in this area and the Scots black-faced sheep farmers and some people with cheviots on the moor. That, so the breeds of sheep change a little bit. I think probably the biggest difference is the shepherds have less time. We're not just shepherds, we've probably got tractor driving jobs to do on the farm and I think in some ways our life is easier perhaps it's a little bit lonelier because there's less people working on the farm I think the welfare of these sheep living on the moor is actually really high they're not wild but there's not many fences about to stop them going where they want and eating what they want they do do well on the moor compared to in fields sheep they they can Keeping the wind when there's flies about, they're not going to suffer from maggots in the same way. It makes me happy to farm sheep here because I think the sheep are basically happy. This isn't good land for growing on, this is um, good land for grazing on. This is taking the uh, energy that's being produced here and transforming it into a meat product in a, in a really sustainable way. We're not doing it on land that could be used for growing vegetables. I think there is room for a bit of mixed management of the moor. Maybe some of it could be rewilded or have something more interesting happen on it. But sheep at the moment are recognised as an important part of managing this landscape and which is good for certain types of bird and things. So there is an ecological aspect to it as well. Each piece of upland is different. This is a dry heather moorland that I think in ancient history did have trees on. Not all moorland did have trees. Why not plant trees on the really steep bits of the uplands where the sheep find it difficult to graze or it's more difficult to shepherd them, but leave some big open bits on the top of the moor? It's not the most profitable form of farming, I don't think. Sheep prices year on year really vary. A Swaledale ewe at market might fetch £100 if you're really lucky or an old one might sell on a bad day for seven quid. So it's very difficult to plan your year. Sheep are a world market and we're doing this odd little type of upland farming in North York Moors. 
quite a big part of my income for these sheep is through a higher level stewardship scheme and we need some kind of subsidy to make it worthwhile otherwise people wouldn't bother doing it. Nowadays people don't tend to eat lots of Swaledale um, meat from the moor. The, the Swaledale sheep traditionally has been used to breed lowland sheep um, that produce a bigger carcass animal. My parents um, set up a scheme called the um, shearling scheme so a shearling is a sheep that's just been shorn once. So it's like it's like hoggart really. It's, it's a young young mutton. And this is the sheep that um, the shepherds used to keep for themselves because it tasted the best. The reason it tastes good is because it's grown up on the moor, and it's not just been eating a monoculture of grass. It's been eating young shoots of heather. It's been eating gale. It's been eating all the little herbs and delicious things that you can find on the moor. It's, it is a concern that people, young people especially, are eating less lamb, less uh, hoggart, that perhaps not interested in these, in these funny, interesting meats from the North York Moors. This is a really sustainable meat to eat. If we're going to eat meat, let's eat uh, meat from the Moors. Young people have been sort of bombarded with this idea that meat is bad and it's unsustainable, but we definitely need to look a little bit cl more closely than that. Sheep being farmed on a moorland is completely different to pigs being farmed in a shed somewhere and being fed soya beans from South America. You know, these two things are miles and miles apart. But when we think about intensive meat production, it often is very intensive and animals don't have freedom and to behave naturally. These sheep on this moor have an enormous amount of freedom. And I think young people, if they could see this type of farming and see what it, would, what it involves, uh, they would be tempted to taste this meat. When I came to this farm and took on the business of the farm three years ago, I wanted to diversify into vegetable growing, seed growing, do something a little bit uh, more interesting, perhaps have another income stream. But the reality of doing that, the investment, time-wise, skills-wise, is, is enormous, actually. And if you're lambing, you know, it all coincides with the time that weeds are growing. And if you're on your own, you're going to struggle to manage both. The biggest problem for me is being able to afford to pay another person to come here and work with me. And not just, not just that, just because socially it would be really nice just done all this shearing on my own and the only company I had was a big speaker playing all my favourite tunes which was great but it would have been nice to have a little group of people around me, somebody rapping, somebody catching the sheep. I don't own this farm, it's still my dad's farm. If I owned it I'd be really tempted to create more of a community here but how I'm going to motivate people to come here to work for very little money, you know, really quite a cold place, um, doing quite hard work sometimes. Um, it's not going to be easy.